I've always been caught off guard at the fact that gaming benchmarks don't typically upfront disclose that a game has received funding from a hardware company, like Assassin's Creed titles, typically receiving funding from AMD, and Ergo being optimized for their cards and outperforming GeForce cards. Do you think it's good practice to disclose this information, and do you think uh, you'll make an effort to standardize this disclosure? So I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on that in a moment. I'll just quickly add in here that every time that I've asked AMD or NVIDIA whether they actually <laughs> do pay game companies to optimize the game or have their logo in the front of the game or whatever all the time every single time they've said that they there's no actual money transferred hands so to say that it's been they re they receive funding is as far as they're telling me is incorrect the general way that the relationship goes which is what they've described to us is more on the how many engineers they send to a company's you know, to a developer to optimize yeah. the title. And is there some sort of marketing exchange like NVIDIA might receive, say, Battlefield 2042. Is it 2042? Battlefield 2042 game codes for their game bundles. And then in exchange, NVIDIA, you know, helps them optimize, you know, put DLSS in there. Those tend to be more the exchanges that we see. It still makes them sponsored in some form. It's just less. It seems less about the money and more about the additional thing. And you can you can see this in games. If you go to the credits, usually right down the end, there'll be you know Nvidia the Nvidia team, the AMD team, and the Intel team. Just have a look how many engineers are allocated to from each of those teams from each company, depending on which is sponsored or not. It's can be interesting there. But anyway, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Is this actually important to disclose when you're benchmarking? Uh, short answer: I no, I don't think so. Um, yeah, the funding thing you were talking about, it's like a... Well, it's open to interpretation, isn't it? It's a bit like people argue that, you know, because we consider ourselves to be independent reviewers, and by independent, we don't let any companies or outside influences change how we go about reviewing, all that sort of stuff. But people will argue, no, you're not an independent reviewer because you accept a review samples, therefore it's sponsored content. And it's like, well, okay, well, that's up to you to how you want to define that but you know we have our processes where we think we're very transparent we do a good job in that regard so however you want to call it but yeah they're, they're saying they don't pay the company so that wording is technically incorrect but then as you say like in a way they were funding resources by allocating engineers so yeah sort of splitting yeah. hairs at that point but is it important for for me to disclose you know, sometimes I'll mention that this is an AMD sponsored title, or this is an NVIDIA sponsored title. Really, the only thing I try to be mindful of is making sure that like our entire, you know, batch of games isn't heavily AMD sponsored or isn't heavily NVIDIA sponsored. Um, but even then, while I know the sort of fans of either company, which is bizarre to have, but they certainly do exist, let me tell you, uh, it, it shouldn't really matter too much. Like if AMD, it just means AMD's done a better job of sponsoring popular games. So if all of this summer's AAA titles were sponsored by AMD, we're not going to be like, well, you know, we can't include, I'm just going to make some names up that weren't necessarily sponsored by AMD and they weren't, but like, you know, Cyberpunk 27, uh, 2077, we're not going to include that because we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla and that's also an AMD sponsored title. So Basically, if AMD sponsored the next eight blockbuster titles, uh, we would test with those titles and it w our benchmark suite would heavily favor AMD. That would just be the reality of it because they've sponsored really popular games. Yeah. So we, while we try to keep it balanced, at the same time, we're not going to kick out a game like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is a really high quality AAA title because you know, they've made it well optimized for AMD hardware. And it's certainly not like a lot of people claim it's broken on NVIDIA hardware. I know I've, I've played it plenty on GeForce GPUs and it, you know, while it's not as fast, it does run really well. So, you know, I think a game like there, were, there have been ones in the past. I think it was maybe the original Project Cars game was just absolutely woeful on Radeon GPUs. Like the frame rates on the mid-range stuff well, wasn't playable. If I'm thinking about the right game, we're going back many, many, yeah, many years Yeah, I think now. that's right. I, I agree with you. I think it's that issue of, you know, one company being sp sponsoring a title and that game performing significantly better on their GPUs was a big issue a decade ago, and I think it's be become less of an issue in the past five years. I think especially 
because game developers are effectively forced to optimize their games for Radeon GPUs because the game consoles use that same architecture. So they've been... There was foul play as well. Yeah, so... (laughs) So I think, yeah, it's, it's kind of... How many times have we seen AMD sponsored titles not actually run better on AMD GPUs? I mean, even the previous Assassin's Creed game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, yeah. clearly ran better on NVIDIA GPUs despite being an AMD sponsored title. And similarly, there have been games that run just fine on AMD GPUs that are NVIDIA sponsored. So yeah. I think it's it's less of a concern these days than it was. Certainly, you don't want to have the, the games like we saw previously where, you know, NVIDIA says, please include Hairworks in this, and then you turn on Hairworks and the frame rate just falls through the floor. Um, but again, we don't see that as often anymore. So, No, we don't. When I was exposed, like, you know, the, the tessellation, that's an example. Another one was Crisis, for example, where the use of tessellation was just extreme to the point where it made no noticeable impact to the visual quality about 20 steps earlier. So, yeah, the fact that we're not seeing that's obviously a good thing. Um but yeah, it really just comes down to the the, the games. So, for example, if 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 as I said, if AMD sponsors the next eight really popular games and Nvidia doesn't, there's not much we can do about that. You guys still want to know how you know your GPU performance in the upcoming Battlefield game or the upcoming Far Cry game. So, yep, that's why we test with them. 